guys so today I'm just going to be talking to you about all of my guinea pigs and bunnies so don't worry this knife is just uh, cut open the hay so I'm just going to talk to you about them all and give you a bit of tips and advice if you need anything like that and also just show you what I have and yeah so let's get to it right now I'm just in the makeshift greenhouse that we turned into a hay shed so I've got some hay ready and I'm moving some of the guinea pigs around because some of the boys are having tiff taffs again which is great because I just love when that happens so we'll get into that in a minute but first of all I'm just going to get some of this hay sorted so first of all just because I'm setting up the litter box in here I'll just start off by showing you the little bunnies and guinea pig that I have in here so I just put this guinea pig in here because he's one of the ones that is having a bit of issues with the other boys in my big boy herd so this is falafel he is the one of the first guinea pigs I ever got he's probably about almost two years old now he's a good little boy he's very friendly um so he's living with my bunny at the moment who can't go with any of my other bunnies because he is unfixed and is still too young to be fixed and um so I don't have any fixed females for him to to stay with either so he is in this nice big double hutch and he is staying with my little guinea pig at the moment so he's not all alone which is good and the guinea pig isn't on his own either but he's not having any issues with any other boys either and since none of my girl guinea pigs are fixed either at the moment he is stuck with the bunny rabbit unfortunately um, but I do give them the same food which is not recommended but the food that I've got is tailored specifically to rabbits um, but I make sure that I supplement the vitamin C that they are supposed to get from their own pellets to the guinea pigs in the form of lots and lots of green grasses and lettuce and stuff like that so I'm just going to pop his litter tray in here um, he's got a hay rack already in here and a little hidey house which I'm probably going to put on top of the litter tray so that he can hide in his litter tray and then his poops are a little bit easier to clean up he already wants to hide behind his litter tray don't you falafel he's very skittish at the moment I try to leave them the guinea pigs to do their own thing like I don't like to stress them out too much um, if they want to be real friendly I've got some that are real friendly if they don't I just try and leave them to it you know I do their daily checks or whatever they need but other than that try not to fuss over them too much because it's not really fair on them um, so yeah He's going to live his good life in here for now until I can sort something else out. I'm probably going to look into fixing some of my boys just to ease that stress for them. And then they can hopefully live together in their massive herd cage as well. And this little guy doesn't have a name unfortunately because I'm probably going to be selling him. Hey buddy. Um, he is a Netherland dwarf, purebred. Um... He was one of my babies, like I have it, I've had him since birth, so he's doing really, really well. His brother recently just went to a new home, so he was all on his own and I didn't really enjoy that. So now he's got a bit of a friend. I tried to make him inside bunny, but my parents are not happy with inside bunnies, so he's just going to be little buddy outside. Um, it's not too cold here. They are protected from the rain. I've got some tarps on the sides and the holes and I put a tarp over the front of the cage as well. And yeah, so he's just going to live in here until he finds a really good home to live in permanently. Hey, but he's so friendly. Like, look, oh, so cute. Hey, Floss. Here you go, buddy. Sweet. So I'm just going to finish off with these guys and then I'll move on for you. So in here was where I had my mum, Netherland Dwarf. Um, and she recently, unfortunately, escaped. And I couldn't catch her and I haven't seen her for about three or four weeks now. So on a farm like this, it's really just anywhere they can hide or and they can go next door and there is just like absolutely fields and just burrows everywhere so she's gone that's for sure unfortunately and it is sad her name was Rosie she was a gorgeous and such a friendly little bunny bun but um yeah she is unfortunately 
gone unless she comes back which would be amazing but I don't have high hopes for that unfortunately but this is a makeshift um hutch that I made I got this hutch from one of the guinea pigs I rescued um it already had this little um, box thing tunnel so I just attached it to this run that we weren't using um blocked off the top there so they can't get out and made them a nice little run area and they quite enjoy this it's probably better for them in terms of um of space so they can't dig their way out i've tried them in one of our bigger hutches but they just keep escaping through the holes in the side so they're going to stay in here for now until i can sort something else out um it's pretty good they've got little jumpy places they've got um pallets to hide under um and then they got this run as well where they have their their hay their hay homes and um everything so they have all of that to hide into burrow in and then over here i've got so i give them all water bowls they do all get green unfortunately so it is a cleaning job that i have to do weekly um and then they've got three litter trays over there with hay in them and then hangy hook for hay I think those um, flower pots that you can hang on are perfect for hay. If you just take those um, little flower beds out of the top, perfect for hay. The bunnies love it. And then they've got their food bowl. And they really like to hide under here, under the pallets. So that's where these guys live. There's three bunnies in here, two girls currently. They're all hiding, by the way, so I can't get them out. I don't want to stress them out. Um, so I'll show you those and add in a clip a bit later but um two of the girls are some of the babies from the mum and they're currently sold but obviously with this isolation they haven't been able to get to their new home yet so i'm keeping good care of them here making sure they're all happy and safe and they um they'll be going together they live really happily but they also are living with their dad who's recently probably about three months ago now had his procedure so he's no longer fixed no, he is no longer intact so he is safe to live with them they all get along really really well and they're doing really well in here there is something i'm gonna have to sort out though for poor little benjamin when he gets um when his uh little bubbas leave him because he's gonna be on, on his own and i really don't want that so i'm gonna have to think of something to keep him company So if you are a bunny or guinea pig fanatic like I am, you probably already know this, but if you're just thinking about getting a bunny or a guinea pig, or you know, you're just a bit interested in them but you haven't um, got any, you might not know that they need a lot of hay. Hay needs to be like 90% of their diet. So obviously I've got quite a lot of hay in my hay shed. That's just to ensure that all of these bunnies and guinea pigs have enough hay that they can live off of. Um, then they need uh, a certain amount of pellets every day as well. And then they also need fresh water and they need some fresh leafy greens every day as well to keep up their vitamin C needs. So usually I'll go with grass, which is really, really good for them. Or romaine lettuce, cos lettuce if you're in New Zealand, or the frilly red lettuce is also really good for them. Um, silver beet, just those nice leafy greens, but not iceberg lettuce because iceberg lettuce is really not good for their tummies. It's just basically water and it gives them no nutritional value. So basically just avoid iceberg lettuce. Cucumber is pretty good for them as well. Not every day though, because it can obviously promote upset tummies as well so that's not too good for their bellies but having a little bit as a treat every so often is okay for them and they really love cucumber and then they have fruits or other vegetables every so often but definitely not every day because those sorts of vegetables they need in their diet like carrots and um, apples and stuff like that but they're not supposed to have it every day Maybe just a small amount every two days or a, a little bit more every three, you know. So just not every day because it isn't really good for their diet at all. Um, but yeah, that's just a little bit of facts about how they should eat. Obviously, they need fresh water every day. I like to give them water in bowls. A lot of people obviously like the bottles. I've actually got both options available to all my animals. 
uh, just in case one prefers bottles, one prefers water. They pretty much have all tended to go to bowls at the moment though. But just in case it's a really, really hot day and the water's ru running low and I'm not home during the middle of the day, they've also got the bottle option to go to, which they will do if they need the water. But they, I, I don't tend to need to fill that up very often because it's generally a last minute thing. They all go towards the bowls. They really enjoy them. So, um, yeah, now I'm just going to show you my next run area and bunnies and guinea pigs in there. So this is a makeshift um, run that I made to extend onto this really awesome egg glue um, hutch. You can get them, if you're in New Zealand, on Trade Me. They are from overseas. They do have a website as well. I think you can order from them. They're pretty, they're, they are amazing hutches. Hard to get into though. So if you can get the bigger versions that stand tall, sort of like this, but it's an igloo version, that would be amazing for your bunnies. They have um, insulation pockets inside of the the home there for them. It's a really good hutch. This one I just find difficult to get into um, in terms of the run just because of the height of it and the, the the top shape. It's just really difficult for me to get into. So if I need to catch my bunny or my guinea pigs, it makes it really difficult for me to get all the way in. Although it does have a really cool um, contraption here where you can lift this up, turn it, and it closes the door to, to the home. So they can, um, you can trap them in there and then you have access to them easier. Um, so yeah, I really do um, promote the egg glue stuff if you do a lot of research into it. It is good for outdoor animals and it comes with a tarp already that suits its, um, its enclosure on the top, which is amazing for me. So this is just some basic enclosure um, fencing that I had and because my bunny here, Snuffles, is a bit deformed, he can live in this perfectly because I, he has no issues with jumping over the top because he physically can't, bless his little soul. So he and two little boy guinea pigs have a massive area to themselves. They are like spoiled lucky. <coughs> but um, yeah, so I had put an extra chicken wire and mesh on the on some of these places here just because I had tried it with some of the other bunnies but they kept jumping over the top so it just wasn't working out so it's perfect for snuffles here and then the guinea pigs as well because they clearly can't get through um, this is works as like a digging area which was great for the bunnies that digged and I love that idea this was already here when we moved so it's not something I can build but um, snuffles doesn't really use it because he's not a digging bunny he he can't really dig so it's um doesn't really serve a purpose in that sense the guinea pigs can't get out of the bottom of this enclosure either because it is pretty intact and the areas that might come up i have chicken wired down so like underneath all of this and over there i've chicken wired the floor so they cannot get underneath so they're pretty secure in here and i've never ever had an issue with um birds hawks possums anything like that coming in and grabbing them but that is something you should be careful with especially if you live on a like a really f rural farm you should be really careful about how open and accessible your enclosure is for these animals so that they are fully protected and they're not going to get um obviously picked up and injured because they are prey animals unfortunately so um snuffles here bless him he is the cutest bunny so i just picked up snuffles just so you can see him a bit better um so he is deformed i probably shouldn't use that word but he is um he had cataracts in his eyes when he was a newborn bubba so he was one of rosie's babies as well her first litter i had with her and he had cataracts in his eyes and his eyes are just really um they're just not very healthy looking don't know if you can see really with the lighting here that just looks normal from in the camera doesn't it they've got stuff in the middle of them basically i'm not sure if he is blind because of it or anything like that um he's never really proven to me that he's blind but i do think that he has picked up some really good senses so i mean it's very possible that he could be blind but his major issue at the moment is the fact that his bottom two legs are crossed like this so he has an issue with um his crossed legs there 
Um, he lives a happy life. It doesn't bother him. I just make sure that he is kept clean down there because obviously it is where he does his business. And so I just have to make sure that he doesn't have anything caught on there. He's not getting um, burns on his back legs or anything like that. But he's been pretty good with it so far. Um, so it doesn't seem to be an issue that I really need to look into maybe removing them which wouldn't be good for him because bunnies don't do well under anesthetic anyways um so yeah he just lives on his own because I'm too scared to put him with any other bunnies just because I'm scared that he'll get picked on because he's not like any of the other bunnies um but other than that he is the cutest bunny I um I was able to bottle feed him when he was newborn so that none of the other babies picked up on his um his eye problems and so we built this really awesome bond and so he is one of my only bunnies who will run towards me when I come outside instead of away from me which is amazing so I will just open up the igloo for you there is two little boys in here Apple and I don't actually have a name for the other little guy in the back there um, so Apple here is one of my first guinea pig baby litters and he is such a sweetheart but he is also deformed he has the weirdest squeaking noise um it's almost like it's a respiratory issue um but it's never been an issue so he just sneezes um a couple of times and he obviously has a weird squeak so it's never been anything that i really needed to be concerned about he's always done really awesome apart from his squeak which is really annoying if he's inside to sleep with <laughs> but yeah he's doing awesome and that this is where they like to hide out most of the time so what I'm actually using here for my hay is just fresh meadow hay which is really really good for your bunnies and guinea pigs if you live in New Zealand at least because there isn't much access to things like Timothy hay and if there is it's really expensive so for someone like me with this many bunnies and guinea pigs it is really difficult to access enough Timothy hay for an affordable price basically um, and it's not really beneficial to just give your animal well your bunnies and guinea pigs just timothy hay anyways because it is really rich and it can upset their tummies if they eat too much of it so meadow hay is absolutely perfect and if you're in new zealand i do recommend um just purchasing if you only have a couple of guinea pigs or bunnies just purchasing a bale just one bale you can find it on marketplace facebook marketplace or trade me and just get one bale it's like ten dollars sometimes even less if you're lucky and um yeah you you can have that for ages obviously i need a lot more bales because i go through bales so quickly but um this stuff is really really good for you obviously if you're in somewhere like america you probably have much easier access to something like timothy hay because in a lot of the videos i've seen there is just <laughs> countless amounts of timothy hay all around which is not something that is readily available unfortunately here in new zealand so, um, yeah, I just do recommend looking into meadow hay. It's really good. This meadow hay, hay I have right here, actually, <laughs> for the first time ever, it has got a lot of thistles in it. It's not bad for the guinea pigs or the bunnies at all, but it is bad for me, especially when I don't have gloves on, because I just get a lot of um, needles and splinters in my fingers, and man, does it hurt. So that's just something to be aware of and be careful of it's getting a bit dark as well especially since we're in the big run here so this is where I keep my uh, two larger bunnies and the female guinea pig herd all of my females are in here and they all get along perfectly I've never ever had an issue with them fighting when they've been in such a large area like this they're really happy and content they love living with each other they found their own little homes if they don't want to get along with each other or they cuddle up together which is awesome um so they live in this i think it's a four by two meter run so it is massive it's got a roof on the top so they're completely protected and i've added in my own tarpaulins just to protect them from rain and they also have a massive tree above them so they're even more protected from that sun and the rain if it rains heavily um so in here i've made my own pretty much makeshift um toys and levels and everything like that so here we have snow white she's a new zealand white rabbit she's gorgeous she's still only a baby i've only recently got her um she's gonna get real big but at the moment she's she's pretty big to be honest but not as big as she's gonna get 
she's lovely and then in the back here is my peter rabbit he is my my um my first bunny that i actually bought myself and he is a flemish giant if you can tell he is huge he's a big big boy and since he moved into this hutch he has just thrived he's gotten so big and he loves it he absolutely loves it in here and he is just gorgeous and obviously his namesake peter rabbit is a flemish giant and he looks very similar hey pete um so i've got this double hutch in here which was peter and his unfortunately recently passed away New Zealand Rex, no she was a Dutch Rex, sorry, um, her name was Jessica, Jessica Rabbit, so they were together for a long long time, and um, so they lived in here initially, but then obviously I've progressed and progressed into bigger and bigger runs until I could afford this monstrous thing, um, I've added in tyres on the sides so that they can jump through them, got a little cage home that they go into, I've got this, um, this was like um a carrier but I just filled it with hay they love trying to dig through it got this litter tray that has never been used for litter I just put water in it and it works as a water bowl for them a uh, box which has been crushed by the guinea pigs there's a chair plastic chair that the bunnies like to jump onto this is just where I put all the hay at the moment um, while I'm sorting it out but this is a, a ramp up to the top of this little hutch that has a little hidey home house and a nice little textured what is it it's like a mat bathroom mat which is awesome they are amazing recommend you use those especially if you're going to use fleece or those sorts of things for indoor bunnies or guinea pigs that um textured bath mats amazing you can get them from kmart um you can get them from the warehouse they are awesome um i have this little jumpy what is it like footstool awesome don't really know what to do with it in here at the moment though then there's just a bucket that i use for more hay there's this cool little thing that you can actually buy from Kmart as well. I actually had it for a different purpose, but now I didn't need it for that purpose anymore. So it is amazing. The bunnies can use it to pick up and chuck around. Usually I'll put hay in it. It's just a cool toy for them, something different. Just, you know, it just different things all the time. There's another hutch here. I do have a lot of um, wooden boards on the floor underneath the hutches. And then obviously a lot of pallets as well. There's a tunnel there's another box that is sort of a litter tray there's like a food trough that we don't use because we don't have like pigs or anything like that so that's there there's a mini dog bed that I like to use for more hay and as a bed and then my big bin here is obviously for all their food and then a little bed that actually uses a um, pathway to the ramp that the guinea pigs can use to get into this hutch as well so Basically, I've utilized the space as much as I can. I try and add things to it all the time. I try and make sure that they have enough hay and enough food in here to last them. As you can see, the guinea pigs are all hiding right now because they really do not like me. But as soon as I get um, any sort of grass or greens or new hay, they tend to all run out <laughs> straight away. They love it. So um, I'll try and catch footage and put it in here of when I give them their greens a bit later um of them all out here because there is probably about I think there's I don't know exactly how many but I think there's about 18 girl guinea pigs in here there is some that I had purchased and then there's about 10 that I rescued from someone who was in just really unable to look after them one I rescued from the SBCA just before the isolation because she was going to be all on her own for the entire isolation I just didn't want that when I have the space um there's another two that I rescued from someone who found a whole bunch of guinea pigs on the side of the road and then there is um yeah a couple of the babies that I'd had when I first got the guinea pigs I think that's all yeah but yeah, that's all that's in here. So in my previous video that I filmed probably about six seven months ago now I um I explained 
all the animals I have. I've obviously lost quite a few of those or gained quite a few of those. So if you want to go back and watch that video, you get a bit more of an insight as to which animals I actually have and more a bit about them, their names sort of thing. Um, obviously, some of those aren't around anymore and some of those I have added to. Um, I'll go into more detail on all the other animals that I own on different videos. This one is specifically about my guinea pigs and my bunny rabbits because it's a very long, very long um, video. So, so I just dedicate this one to just them. Um, so yeah, if you go back and watch that, you'll know a bit more in depth. And I can do a meet all my guinea pigs, meet all my bunnies video if you want that. Give it a big thumbs up if that's what you want. And I'll do a more in-depth video on those as well for you. Um, let me know if there's any sort of facts that you want me to tell you or any advice that you want me to give you on how to look after these animals, especially if you're in New Zealand. I know there's not a lot of options out there for you to find out about. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy to do all these videos. Um, just leave me a comment below and let me know. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel because I will be posting a lot more videos during this lockdown, um, specifically tailored to all of my animals. So if you want to find out how to look after them or what animals I have or you're just bored out of your mind like I am, feel free to subscribe and watch them all. So lastly we have my second big massive 2x4 run. It's right next to this one. Um, also makeshift. I've just added in tarps on top and down the bottom is some mesh so the guinea pigs can't get out and here's where I keep most of my boy herds although like I said they are having a, a few tiff tafs because boys don't tend to get along together um, I have read a lot of places that have a lot of boys that do get along together if there's enough space and trust me in here there is plenty of space they are just not getting along so I am going to have to consider different options at the moment um, as you can see I do have two bunnies in here I have my Netherland Dwarf, Roger, he is fixed, and then I have my mini lop, Flopsy, she's gorgeous colour, she's a harlequin, she's caramel with a bit of grey patches on her sides, she's absolutely gorgeous, they're going to run away if I try and go near them, so I'm just not going to go near them or any closer so that they do not run away and you can see them. Um, oh. Roger is just a sweetheart. I got him with Rosie, but he was already fixed and I got Flopsy last year And she is just such a beautiful bunny. I really do love her. She's The only female rabbit that actually unfortunately survived out of I had four Four females and she's the only one that survived in the last Month three of them two passed away and one went missing so Rosie went missing, Jessica unfortunately passed away, and I also had one called Velvet, who was only little, she was an Angora, and she was gorgeous, I'll insert a photo here, and um, she unfortunately passed away as well. Jessica and Velvet unfortunately both contracted a disease called Snuffles, which, yes, is the name of my deformed bunny, um, but this disease, it, 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 it's hard to pick up on, and then, um, when they do get it unfortunately it is difficult to treat so um yeah unfortunately they both passed away just with difficulty breathing and um this infection through their um sinuses and everything like that so it was tragic unfortunately i did all i could but um yep flopsy here is still going strong and it's awesome so i have this double hutch in here another standing free hutch a little just hidey home Hutch on the floor, chair for the bunnies to jump up onto, tunnel, they love tunnels, they mostly just love to go underneath the pallets if I'm being completely honest with you, tunnel over there, there's a lot of hidey homes, there's one here, there is one here, there's a tunnel, tunnel, there's one underneath here, they don't really use the hidey holes because they like to hide under the pallets, but if I remove it, they will fight and hurt each other so it's just uh, they're just so confusing guinea pigs sometimes honestly so um there's i think there's about eight boys in here now they are mostly abyssian boys very very gorgeous so i don't want to get rid of any of them 
but obviously if that's what I have to do then that's what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to rehome them to find them good homes. But at the moment they're all doing good. All the boys in here haven't had any signs of fighting each other anymore. So one of these boys was a rescue with the 10 girls that I rescued. The rest are all, um, they're all previous babies that I had from previous um, litters that had occurred with the girls. Yeah, that's all in that I have in here. Lots and lots of food bowls, water bowls, water bottles, and hidey holes, and lots and lots of hay. It's really good for their um, for their bedding. And then I obviously will do a full clean when needed, which will be very soon, unfortunately. It's going to be a big job. And because we're on a sort of slant, where are we locating right here? All the hay like tracks down here, so this whole section is just building up, and then there's like nothing over here where I put it. So that's annoying. May I'll have to do a video of me maybe just cleaning up the the hutches for you guys to see. We do have a bit of an issue with water logging in this section here. It was happening up here too. I did manage to stop it from happening, but I'm going to have to do it here. But the issue is, when I push all that water, it rolls straight down the hill. And so I've been trying to put it off, but I think it is coming into winter now and it's going to rain a lot. So I just need to bite the bullet and soak myself trying to get rid of all that water. I don't want to make holes so that it doesn't, because obviously the roof is here to protect them from the water and the rain. So making holes will just defeat the purpose. So I really just need to bite the bullet and soak myself and sort it out for them as best as I can. So I know this has been a really long video and most of you guys probably wouldn't have even watched to the full extent of this video because it can be boring, I can understand that, but if you have watched all this way, you are awesome, you must be super bored, just like me. I watch a lot of these types of videos so there's got to be people out there that will enjoy it. If you do enjoy it, please subscribe and request more videos. Um, Tell me what you want to know, what you want to see. I'm happy to do it. I've got nothing else to do with my time really at the moment because university is coming up on a break and obviously we're stuck at home so I can't go to work. So yeah, just let me know and I'm happy to do it. Um, so I'm going to leave you guys here. Um, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and hopefully I'll see you all in my next video. Thanks for watching.